Good evening everyone, this is Christian M0UOS here. I just want to make a short screencast all about PyQSO. PyQSO is a general purpose contact logging tool for amateur radio operators, mainly aimed at those uh, using the Linux operating system, but it can also run on uh, other platforms such as Microsoft Windows. PyQSO has been in development since 2012 and I'm pleased to announce that it's nearing its first major release which is version 1.0.0. This follows several somewhat draft releases over the past few years and I thought now's a good time to make a screencast to demonstrate the key features that PyQSO has to offer. Uh, how to install PyQSO, how to configure it, and uh, how to log QSOs. I'll be doing all of this on the Linux Mint distribution of Linux, uh, specifically version 18.2, um, but PyQSO will also run very happily on other distributions such as Ubuntu. This screenshot I have here shows what PyQSO looks like in action. This shows my logbook m0uos.db for my call sign and uh, it shows several logs uh, open at the top here. So, so the way PyQSO subtraction works is that there is one single logbook file which is a database file and inside of this logbook there are essentially several pages or several individual logs, each of which can contain multiple QSOs. So the advantage of doing it this way is you have a single logbook file, but within that logbook file I have one log up here for, in this case, all of my SO50 amateur radio satellite work. I have another log for other uh, VHF and UHF contacts, for example, those contacts that I make via a repeater. And I have another log uh, called HF, which is where I use, uh, where I store all of my HF contacts, for example, those on the 20 meter and 40 meter bands. Down below here, we have um, a DX cluster window. So this is connected to a server and that server's sending PyQSO some information about all of the DX uh, stations that have, that have been spotted and all of the frequency information. So we can go ahead and tune our radio to those frequencies and uh, hopefully work some good DX. And if we are successful in making that contact, we can then log it up here. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Um, I'm going to assume here that you haven't got the software on your computer already. So let's go to the GitHub webpage. So the github.com site is where the PyQSO source code is hosted. It's also the place um, where users can submit bug reports and feature requests. So if you have any ideas about you know, what you'd like to see included in PyQSO, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me either via email or you can submit uh, your thoughts on the issues page here. So if we scroll down, we'll see the readme file, which is always a good place to start. Now there's some information here about installing and running PyQSO, but before we get to that, we'll just scroll down a little bit further to the dependencies section. So dependencies are software packages that PyQSO relies on to work correctly. I found that with the latest version of Linux Mint, um, this package is already installed, but you will also need to install uh, these, other, these other two core dependencies. You can do that by going to the terminal and typing sudo apt-get install and then the package's name. So in this case, I've already installed it, so it's saying it's already at the newest version, um, just to save a little bit of time here. But that's how you do it, if you needed to install the dependencies yourself. 
There are also several optional dependencies that can be installed. Uh, these are used, for example, to enable the gray line tool, so the map of the world, which shows which areas uh, are in darkness, and, uh, and also to enable the plotting of logbook statistics. So PyQSO can plot, um, for example, a pie, pie chart, which shows the percentage of contacts that you've made using FM, and the percentage of contacts that you've made using a digital mode, for example. So to enable that, you need all of these extra packages. The documentation for PyQSO is available online, but uh, you can use the Sphinx package to build a local copy of the documentation on your computer. PyQSO also has support for Hamlib, which is a library that interfaces directly with your radio and it uses Hamlib to automatically retrieve the frequency that your radio is, is set to and the mode that it's using. I don't actually have a radio connected up to this computer right now, so I'm not going to install this, um, but the instructions for doing so can be found in the readme file. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the PyQSO source code. So we click download here and we can download the zip. So if we go ahead and do that, save it to the default location, which is our downloads folder. So let's go to our file explorer, double click on downloads, and there it is. There's the PyQSO source code, it all zipped up. So if you right click, click on extract here, and it will extract all the files for us into this directory. Now most of our work when it comes to installing is going to be via the command line. So what we're going to do is change directory to the, the directory where all the files have just been extracted to. So cd change directory downloads slash pyqso hyphen master and hit enter. So there we are. If we do ls we'll see that this is the so-called pyqso base directory. You'll hear that term mentioned in the readme, so pyqso's base directory, uh, which is the directory that the make file is in, or the readme file. So there's both the make file and the readme. Now pyqso can be run without installation. You can do that either by entering python3 bin slash pyqso and hitting enter. But what we're going to do here is actually install it system-wide and we can do that by using sudo make install. Hit enter on that, let it do its thing, and there we go. So pyqso is now installed and we can run it simply by typing pyqso at the command line and hitting enter. And there we go. So this is pyqso. It looks a little bit bare right now because no logbook is currently open, as it says in the bottom left-hand corner here. But that's soon going to change because we're going to make our first uh, logbook file right now. We can do that either by clicking the Create a New Logbook button or by going to the Logbook menu and selecting Create a New Logbook. So we'll do that now. Click on that. And we'll save our logbook in the PyQSO uh, source code Actually, no, no, we won't. We'll change, we'll change to, uh, say, documents. Let's save it in documents. So I'll enter my call, my call sign, dot db, dot database, and click on save. And there we go. So it's, it's given us a summary page saying the, uh, stating the logbook's name, the number of logs we have within that logbook, and the total number of QSOs we've made. So to make a new log, let, let's let's imagine I've been doing some satellite work on AO85. So AO85 is is one of the new uh, newer FM satellites. So let's make a new log to store all of our AO85 contacts. Let's call it AO85 and hit OK. Okay, so here's a blank log uh, where we can enter our QSO information. Now, Peter's always on the satellite, 
2M0 SQL. He's up in Scotland now. Let's imagine we add a contact with him over AO85. We can hit the Add Record button or go to Records and select Add Record and enter QSO information here. Let's say we, we contacted him a few minutes ago. So we enter his call sign 2M0 SQL. Let's say it was, I don't know, five minutes ago. Um, this is in UTC time, so it's a bit different to the time you see uh, down here in the bottom right hand corner. But anyway, um, AO85's up uh, downlink frequency, I can never remember it. Um, mm -hmm. What's it going to be? Never mind, this is taking too long. Let's just make something up. So 145, I think it's 950 for the up link. No, sorry, that's the down link. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's just enter that. It's an FM satellite, so let's choose FM. And let's say I'm using a fairly modest amount of power, let's say five watts via a handheld radio. And Peter's always putting out a good signal. Let's give him a five and nine. Let's say he gives me a five and seven, I'm a bit weak into the satellite. Um, and I can also add notes. So let's imagine, you know, Peter's, I don't know, on a beach somewhere. Um, he also might give me his locator, so I can type in the locator here. India Oscar something um, but I can enter information like that here um, and down the bottom here we have station information so I can enter his name uh, alternatively if you have a qrz.com or hamqth.com account you can also enter your username and password information in the PyQSO preferences dialog which I'll get to in a second uh, that will allow you to automatically look up the station's information if they've provided it uh, using a call sign lookup. So if you hit that button, it will query the call sign database and automatically fill in the information down here for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK on that for now. And there we go, that's our first uh, QR, uh, QSO all logged. Let's imagine we have a few more. So um, we've got Colin, MU0FAL in Guernsey. Um, yeah, okay, we'll keep that the same. Uh, oh, anyway, it's, it's, it's wrong, but anyway, let's. Uh, Let's use that frequency. So FM again, um, five watts. <clears throat> Let's give him five nine, five nine. And we'll add a few more in here. So Echo Bravo one Alpha Oscar. Um, let's uh, I don't know M zero MPT. We got Abdel. Um, I'm I'm leaving out various bits of the QSO information. That's fine, it's just to populate the log a bit. Let's say I accidentally enter the contact with MU0FAL twice. So let's imagine all the information is the same um, with respect to the call sign, the date, and the time. Let's enter that again. Oops. There we go. Now I can check for duplicates. This is a duplicate of that one. So if I go to records and say remove duplicate records, it will check for dupes and there we go. So it's, it's found that and it's removed it for us. I can also uh, do record count. So if my record is, you know, tens of thousands of QSOs long, that will automatically uh, count it all for us. I can also filter by call signs. So if I just want to look up um, contacts, you know, whose call sign starts with EB, for example, I can enter EB up here, and it will just show us that one contact um, with the uh, 
the station there. Okay, um, you can also do other things. So you can export this log as an ADIF file or as a Cabrillo file um, in case you want to export it, perhaps submit it to a contest website or perhaps you want to transfer logs between computers. So let's go ahead and export this log in ADIF format. Once again, we'll, we'll stick it in documents. So we say my call, um, well, my log, my log .adi. Let's call it that. Hit save. Okay, so it's saying it's exported it for us. Let's go to our file browser and open it up. So if you double click on that, it's just, just a text file containing a bunch of information um, about our contacts. Okay, so that file can subsequently be imported into perhaps another log or another log book altogether. So if we navigate to the file that we've just made, and it was saying, where do you want to import this to? I can either import it to the log I've just made or, or I can create another one, let's say, let's say AMSAT, hit enter, it's imported it for us, and they're exactly the same log now. Um, so let's imagine I don't want this AMSAT log anymore. I can go to logbook and click delete selected log. It's saying, are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, and there it goes. It's taken us back to the summary page where it's saying I have just one log now. I'm back to where I started. Uh, I can also print the log. So because there's no printer connected to this computer, I'll have to print it to a file, which is a PDF file in this case. Um, again, I can I can call it mylog.pdf, let's say. Select that and hit print. And if I go back to my file browser, go to documents, mylog.pdf, and there we have it. There's some information about all of the QSOs we've made. Um, I've only you know, had limited space. This is landscape A4. Um, if you'd like to see another field in here, let me know. Um, but I thought these were the, the main fields uh, that people would be interested in printing. Okay, so going back to PyQSO, um, there's the preferences dialog. I'll get to that in a second. First, I'll show you the toolbox. So if you click view and toolbox, this will bring up this, uh, this little toolbox frame down here. You can adjust the size like so using the slider. Um, and there's three three tools here. So first is the DX cluster, which I've uh, which I've gone into detail about the, at the start of this video. The second is a gray line tool, um, which shows you the map of the world. Um, and there's the awards. So I'm, I, I don't really do a lot of award collecting myself. So this is uh, fairly basic right now. But if you'd like to um, see any more awards listed here please do let me know um, it's it would be nice to get a feel for the amount of demand that's out there um, for particular awards dxcc is the biggest one i've heard of so i i included it in here okay so let's connect to a dx cluster um, we go connection connect to telnet server and i can either create a new one or if i've booked bookmarked one from a previous connection, I can select it here. But we'll click on new and let's go and find one. Let's go to Google. And I think there's one beginning with GB7, uh, UK DX class cluster GB7. So here it is. So it's GB7 MBC dot spoo.org that's the host name the port is 8000 and I went to my call sign leave the password field blank and hit uh, bookmark server details so I can uh, retrieve it for next time okay so I hit okay and it's now connected to the server so I can enter commands um, such as show slash dx 
if I hit enter on that, it will show us all of the recent uh, DX spots. Um, and I can now go and enter these. Oh, I can I can tune my radio to these frequencies and hopefully work some of these stations if I wanted to. So that's the main uh, toolbox functionality. If I go to preferences now, so in the general tab, I can show the toolbox frame by default whenever PyQSO is started. I can also open a default logbook. So if I use a particular logbook um, quite often, I can just click on the button here. Um, let's choose the logbook file that I've just created. So michael.db, double click on that. So it's entered that there. And by default, whenever you type in PyQSO, um, at the terminal without specifying a logbook, this logbook will be loaded by default. If you're in contest mode and you want to, you know, you, you've got a lot of contacts or perhaps you've got a pile up or something like that, you can keep the add record dialog open after a QSO is added. So you can just keep on adding them in quick succession. You can also pinpoint your, Q, your QTH, your station location, on the grey line map. So let's enter Southampton. I can use the geocoder um, dependency that we installed at the at the beginning to look up the latitude and longitude coordinates for Southampton. So if I click on the locator, it's gone and looked those up for us. Clicking on the view tab, this allows us to show and hide the different columns that are shown along here if we wanted to. Records, so there's various options. So say for example, you're usually using a small handheld and not using that much power. You can choose a default value of five watts rather than entering it each time. If you're always using FM, for example, you can select it from the list here. Um, and there's various other options. Here's, here's the place where you can enter your qrz.com or hamqth.com login information um, just there. And yeah, here's some, here's some more preferences about ADIF um, importing and hamlib support. So you can enter the path to your radio device here and select the model. Okay, so I'll click enter on that. Uh, click okay on that rather. And just to show you that it's all worked, what I'll do is I'll disconnect from the logbook. I'll disconnect from the DX cluster first. So click disconnect on that. And then what I'll do is I'll go to logbook, click on close logbook, close PyQSO down completely, and start it up again. And you'll see this time it's automatically opened the mycore.db database for us. It's also kept the toolbox uh, open for us um, as per our choice in the preferences dialog. And if we go to the grey line tool now, we'll see that Southampton has been pinpointed on the map. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show. So, uh, so yeah, so if you have any um, suggestions or feedback about PyQSO, please do let me know via email or on the GitHub webpage. I hope to release PyQSO version 1.0.0 in the next few weeks or so. And uh, yeah, hopefully um, you'll be able to use it and find it very useful. Okay. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Seven threes from Christian M0UOS. Thank you.